The ROG Ally is the device I always dreamed about as a kid. If 10 year old me could see that I was playing GTA 5 on the go, he would go insane. I remember I used to look up GTA iOS download hoping that one day I could finally play that game without needing an Xbox. Fast forward to 2023, there's quite a few gaming handouts on the market, with the most popular probably being the Steam Deck right now, and while I haven't tried it, I do think that what Asus has here is its most worthy competitor. When I first took it out of the box and powered it on, I was impressed with the 1080p display, everything on it looks very sharp, and I think it's the perfect resolution for this 7 inch screen. It was lighter than I expected, coming in at just over 600 grams, or about 1.5 pounds. In the hand, it's pretty comfortable, though for me personally, after about 2 hours is when I need a break. Using the controls attached to the side is still awkward to me, especially when trying to play first person games. Also, the two buttons at the back, while very functional as you can remap them, tend to get in the way of my fingers while trying to grip the back. Otherwise though, the handles have a grippy texture that does make holding onto it a lot easier. The Ally does get pretty warm after just around 20 minutes of gameplay, but the heat stays at the back plate and top vents away from where your hands are. When I played my first game, I was pleasantly surprised with just how good the speakers sounded. They have a very clear sound signature and do get pretty loud. Now the white finish has grown on me a little bit. I think it looks really clean, but the biggest downside by far is that any small nicks and scratches you get on here will be that much more visible, especially if you're planning to bring this thing along with you wherever you go, it's prone to you dropping it or just running into things. I don't even know what I did to be completely honest, but I already managed to get a couple nice dents right at the bottom which are made very obvious. I wish there was a black color option because I think that's what makes the Steam Deck look so sleek. Otherwise though, I actually do prefer the design of the Ally. On the back side, the vent is cut out to be the RG logo, and there's this rainbow reflective strip that cuts across the center. Also, on each of the bottom corners is this same reflective effect, but for a small RG logo. Logos. The pop of each color does make for a unique aesthetic, along with the ABXY buttons. These have a glossy finish similar to the DualSense controller and feel pretty good to press in. They're a nice size so are very easy to get at. The D-pad at the left side has a firm feeling when pressing on it, though it doesn't feel too stiff. Across the top are the bumpers and triggers, all of which have this grippy texture along them. When gaming, this is nice to have as it makes resting your fingers here more comfortable and prevents them from sliding off. Also here along the top, you'll find the power button slash fingerprint reader, two LED indicators for battery and power, and the volume buttons right next to those. My plus button is stuck and no longer clicks anymore, which is super annoying, but luckily it does still function normally. In the middle is a USB-C port. This can be used for both power delivery, but also connect to an external display. The last two ports include the 3.5mm audio jack and an SD card slot. This is supposed to allow you to expand the storage, but be careful because I've read from some people on Reddit that it's not working properly. With that, as of now, it seems the only reliable way to increase your storage is by picking up a compatible M2 drive or use an external SSD or hard drive. There's four small buttons on the side of the screen. The top left is the view button, which in game acts like the back button, and the top right is the menu button. Now, the other two are for the Ally software with the right button opening up Armory Crate, and the left bringing up the Command Center, which is just a quick way to change the most important settings. Here you can adjust your screen brightness, the power usage mode, enable an FPS counter, and so on. Looking over, the joysticks are not my favorite, but I'll touch on them in more detail later. Around both of them is an RGB ring, which can be configured with varying different lighting profiles. I'm not a fan of RGB to begin with, and I felt like this was a huge waste of battery, so turning it off was the first interaction that I had with the Ally software. Armory Crate is is what you'll need to use when first setting up the device. When you come in here, it sends you to the game library where you can automatically launch your games from any launcher. It is nice to have everything all in one place, but I still tend to just use Steam Big Picture. In the settings tab, you can edit what you want to have in the command center, but also make changes to the device's audio and display color settings. Lastly, in the content tab is where you're going to want to go into system and turn off run armory create at launch because it's a piece of shit. The ally runs on Windows 11, which for a handheld meant to play all your games is a big pro. You're able to play any game you could on a proper gaming PC, download emulators, play Xbox Game Pass, use PS Remote Play, etc, etc. That said, as this is a touchscreen device, navigating Windows is kind of a pain in the ass. The OS is very obviously not meant for this kind of input, and I find that trying to jump through different windows or tap on small buttons is very difficult. Once I'm gaming though, I can put those inconveniences aside and enjoy the fact that I have access to my entire PC gaming library on the go. While the Ally is more than capable of running AAA titles, what I personally find it best for is knocking out indie games from my backlog. Those and older titles like Bully are what I really love having this device for. So there's two models of the Ally that you can purchase. 
one with a six core AMD Ryzen Z1 processor and the one I have here with the eight core Z1 Extreme processor. It's a $100 price difference with the top model coming in at $699. It also has 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is the perfect amount for games and a 512 gigabyte SSD. In my opinion, the SSD is a little too small as I find with just a couple of games downloaded, you've already used up all the storage. Especially if you're playing new games, these days those are like 100 plus gigabytes. So you're really gonna wanna upgrade this if you're playing a variety of titles on here. To test the ally, I've put in a good amount of hours across both indie titles and AAA games. GTA 5 was of course one of the first and getting to play that game in the car which is one of my buddies was such a fun experience. At 1080p, you do have to play at basically the lowest settings, but the ally consistently gave me just about 60 FPS, which is super playable. What's also nice is that because the screen is so small, it's not that big of a deal that you need to lower the quality so much. Hogwarts Legacy was one of the games I tested that struggled the most, which makes sense being a very new AAA title, but even at the lowest settings with AMD FSR, I was having a lot of stuttering issues at 40 FPS. What seemed to fix it for the most part was actually changing the VRAM usage to auto in the settings, so I do recommend that you set it to that even if you're not playing this game specifically. Turning over to Modern Warfare, I was really interested how an FPS game would feel on here, and what I'll say is the joysticks are the biggest issue the ally has. Out of the box, I was having some dead zone issues that made the joysticks essentially unusable in any FPS game. In the command center, I made sure I set the control mode to gamepad from auto, and this has since seemed to fix the issue. That said, the joysticks still don't have the same feeling as a PlayStation or Xbox controller. Those ones feel more stiff and like they actually have some travel, but with these, no matter how much I adjust my sensitivity, I can never properly aim and keep my crosshair on target. I had to heavily rely on aim assist, and even then I was still playing like garbage. I won't lie though, I did have some good fun. Next, I booted up Cyberpunk, which very surprisingly runs great on here. I was consistently sitting around 40 to 50 FPS, and the fact that I can play this game literally wherever I want is insane. While of course you can download any PC game to play offline, remote playing your PS5 is something that you can do on the Ally. Before you're able to play though, you're going to need to download REWASD and then select the PlayStation Remote Play preset. This will emulate the Ally's controller as a DualShock, which will have it working properly. Alternatively, you can just plug your DualSense straight into the USB-C port and it'll work the same. Your experience is largely going to depend on your internet connection, but over Wi-Fi, there was only a small amount of input lag and the picture looked great. This is in part thanks to the full HD display that we have here on the Ally. It features a 120Hz refresh rate, which is amazing to see on a handheld, and a 7 millisecond response time. Though, aside from a few indie titles, you're never going to be hitting 120 frames, but when navigating through Windows, the screen will feel very fluid. With the AMD FreeSync support, you'll be able to take advantage of VRR, so you don't have to deal with any frame tearing. I found the 7-inch screen to be just the right size for a handheld, as small HUD elements aren't hard to see, and the device itself doesn't feel too big in my hand. The screen has a max brightness of 500 nits, which will be more than enough for indoor play, but when outside, you'll want to stay out of direct sunlight. The battery life is definitely worth mentioning because it's by far the biggest drawback the Ally has. On average, expect to get just around two hours of gameplay on a full charge. In later, easier to run games, I found that you're able to squeeze maybe another half an hour or 45 minutes or so, but that's right about where it'll max out. That said, the fact that you could run AAA games on the go close to about 60 FPS for two hours is actually really impressive. If you want to bring it on a long car ride or flight, you'll most definitely want to pick up a power bank though. I bought a really nice one from Anchor, which has a 24,000 mAh capacity and an LED screen, which is probably the coolest part. It displays the battery percentage as well as the power output of the device plugged in. It'll even show you an estimation for how long it takes to fully charge. This power bank provides up to a 140 watt power output, so it has no problem keeping the Ally powered while running on the 30 watt turbo mode. If you use the included 65 watt charger, you'll go from dead to a full charge very quickly. For me, I found it to be about an hour. Some other accessories I think are worth picking up are some power cables to use with a power bank and a carrying case. This one is from TomTalk and was originally designed for the Steam Deck, but fits the Ally perfectly along with the power bank and all of the other charging cables. Inside the bag is a sleeve you can put it in, which will prevent the screen from getting scratched and also leaves enough room so that the joysticks won't be pressed in. This is all contained in a pretty small form factor, which makes it super easy to travel with. So with all that aside, the ROG Ally really is for me my dream gaming handheld. Running Windows 11 means that it can play just about any game you want, and the Z1 Extreme processor is able to handle even AAA games at a solid 30fps, which in such a small form factor is a sacrifice I don't mind making. The 1080p display is very sharp since the screen is only 7 inches, and the 120Hz refresh rate makes using the touchscreen feel a lot more fluid. I find that the only real drawback is the battery life, but still, 2 hours of any game I want to play on the go isn't a bad deal. 
For $699, you are getting a really solid device, and I would happily pay that price again. I want to know what you guys think of the ROG Ally. Is it a handheld that you'd be willing to pick up, or is it still lacking some features you think it needs? Let me know down below. But with that, I've been Cole, and I appreciate you guys for watching. I'll see you next week, where I'll be showing off some more cool gaming accessories that I think you're going to want to add to your setup. But until then, take care.